Now let's talk about the Windows EC2 instances and how we can launch into our AWS cloud. So what we are going to see into this session is like a user which is trying to provision an EC2 instance and that instance is Windows based. And to accomplish that, we are again going to use the key pair. Uh, we are going to have a private key as well as a public key. So we are going to associate this public key and the private key with our EC2 instances so that we can use those access keys or the SSH keys to do the remote login to our Windows machine. To begin with, this is my AWS homepage of my AWS cloud account. So here I will in the search box type EC2, go to the EC2. And here you can see there is no instance running. So I'm just going to click on launch instances. And here, first of all, I would like to give the name to my EC2 instances. So I'm just going to put demo EC2 uh, for Windows. And if you're coming uh, onto this channel for the first time, then there is a whole series and there's a previous chapter on EC2 essentials where I have explained like how you can start a Linux based EC2 instance. So just please go ahead and check that uh, previous chapter as well. Okay, let's go ahead here. And here you can see we have assigned the name for our EC2 instance. The next thing is we need to choose the image. So here we are gonna choose the Windows based image system and uh, after that we need to choose the instance type so i have already explained uh, but i'm just gonna reiterate those concepts once again so if i talk about the ec2 instances over here then we are trying to provision an ec2 instance which is a virtual server and which is running into our regions so right now i'm working into europe region which you can see so just choose the region which is nearest to you Okay, so after deciding the region and choosing the EC2 instance, which is right now is Windows based, the next thing which we need to choose is the uh, memory, CPU and storage and network setup. So these are the things we need to choose to provision our EC2 instance and that we can cover with our uh, instance type, which is T2.nano, T2.micro and T3.small. So these are the various instance types which covers, uh, which comes with a different CPU and memory configuration. The network setup is not included into this uh, uh, sizing of the EC2 instance, but network setup is a bit different, which I will explain uh, in this chapter as well as I'll go more deeper into the next chapter where we will be, where we will be setting those uh, whole networking like a private subnet, VPC, public subnet and all those things. But just keep in mind that uh, whenever you're trying to provision an EC2 instance, so we need to allocate memory, storage and CPU and that comes from this uh, types, which is T3, Nano, T2, T3 uh, micro, T3 small. So here on to the AWS console, you can see the instance type. So if you uh, expand this drop down, then you will see different, different option. And there are lots of option which will uh, much higher uh, power. So here you can see the X large, which is 16 uh, uh, virtual CPU and 32 gigs of memory. So there are lots of option which you can choose. But for this demo, I'm just gonna stick with the free tier one, which is T3.micro. After that, the key pair login. So as I have explained to you, uh, if I go to the next slide, this is, uh, yeah, probably I can take this one also, it doesn't matter. So this is our private key and this is our public key. So when we create an EC2 instance, then automatically uh, it will attach a public key to that EC2 instance. So for that reason, we need to generate first of all those keys. So here you can see onto the screen, the key I have not selected. So I'm just gonna create a fresh key pair. So I will just click on this key pair and here I will put the demo SSH key for Windows. Okay, and I'm just gonna select the .pam extension because that's a, a standard extension uh, for our SSH key pair. And then I'll click on create key pair. So once you click on create key pair, then you will get two keys. One is public key and one is private key. So I'll just click on key pair over here. And here you can see the private key has been downloaded, which you can see over here onto the uh, uh, download section. And uh, the public key, which is this one, which you can see in the drop down, uh, demo SSH keys for window has been attached to your EC2 instance. So let's take a look onto the diagram once again to explain this concept. So here uh, we just generated a key pair and AWS by default attaches the public key to our EC2 instance and private key is always with us, which we have just downloaded. So here you can see which we have just downloaded this private key. Okay, and these SSH key we are gonna use to perform the remote login to our Windows machine. Okay, all right, so now that's been done. So next thing is the network setting. So as of now, we are just trying to understand the EC2 instances. I'll just go with the default network setup. So I'm just gonna use the default VPC, default subnet, 
and auto assign public IP. This is important. If you don't enable this one, then you will not be able to perform the login to your Windows uh, remote machine. Security group. So I will allow the RDP traffic from. So uh, first thing, whenever you're just trying to log in remotely to your Windows virtual server, then you need to enable the RDP login. Otherwise, you won't be able to log into your machine. And for that reason, we create a security group. And in that security group, we allow everyone if you are trying to allow from outside. Outside you mean from anywhere in the world. So for that reason, we assign this IP ranges. So 0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, which means we are allowing everyone to access this Windows machine remotely. But uh, as a good practice, uh, it is not always the case in the corporate or in a working uh, projects. We don't allow that broader access to our Windows machine. We just restrict to a particular IP range so that only limited people within a corporate can access that EC2 instances or the Windows machine. OK, just we are doing it for the demo purpose. So that's why it is open right now. All right. So now uh, after that, we need to select the storage. So I'm just going with the 30 gigs. Uh, you can just reduce it if you are doing it for the demo purpose. And after that, in the advanced detail, we are not covered at this point of our time. We're just trying to provision an EC2 instance on Windows. OK, we are going to cover it later. All right. So everything looks good. So what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to click over here onto the launch stance, launch instances on the right hand side. So click on launch instances. And the instance has been launched. Let's go to the instances over here and click on the instance ID. And here you can see the state is in running. There are a couple of things which we need to verify over here. So first of all, the public IP, since we have launched uh, in our public subnet and uh, not public subnet, let me check. Yeah, it's in public subnet because it's a default uh, VPC we are using. So this is accessible and we need this public IP so that we can access it uh, from our remote client. This is our private IP, which you need to verify. This is our public DNS. Uh, this is also important, which you can also use to access your uh, Windows machine. And rest of the details looks good to me. And uh, what I'll do, I'll just try to download the remote desktop client uh, for my current setup, current machine. And then I'll try to perform the login to this Windows server. Now, after provisioning or after starting our Windows based uh, server onto our AWS cloud, it's uh, important to know that what kind of a RDP client which you can use to perform the remote login to your virtual server. So as a standard, like we generally have a three kind of a workstation. So you might be using Windows, you might be using a Mac OS, or you might be using a Linux uh, based distros. So let's try to see what are the options which are which we are having for a remote desktop access. So if you are using a Windows based laptop for your learning or working purpose, then there is an enable remote desktop on your PC. So you just need to enable that particular service so that you can use uh, this service to perform the remote login to your remote service server on AWS cloud. And for that, you can just follow this particular page. So I hope you might have enabled previously while working somewhere in your studies or you know, in your project work. But in case if you haven't done that, then please refer to this particular link and just enable the remote desktop onto your Windows laptop. And then after that, you will be able to perform the remote login to your virtual server. OK, so just I'll just post this link into the description section for your reference. Next thing, uh, if you are using the Mac OS, just in my case, I'm working on the Mac OS. So I will use the Microsoft Remote Desktop Client. This is an RDP client uh, through which I can access the remote uh, Windows machine. And if you are using a Linux distros like Ubuntu, Fedora or CentOS, then I would recommend you to use Ramina uh, RDP client, which is also a similar one, just like a Microsoft remote desktop for Mac OS. And you should be able to access your Windows based machine. OK, but as of now, I'm just going to focus on uh, Mac because I'm having a Mac laptop. So I will be using the Microsoft remote desktop uh, from Mac to access our Windows machine. But the the uh, key thing is the steps are exactly identical. You just need to worry about uh, your SSH keys and you also need to have the public IP or public DNS of your EC2 instance of your Windows server. OK, so those are the two things you need to access your remote machine. All right, so this is my EC2 instance and to uh, use the connect option. So you just need to click over here on the right hand side, which you can see, which is connect. So click on connect and here we need we have a three options session manager, RDP client and EC2 serial console. So I'm just going to use the RDP client over here and connect using RDP client. So we already have a RDP client installed onto my local laptop. Uh, 
and here we need to use the password since we are performing a login onto our windows server so we need to have a username as well as the password so here you can see the username which username is visible over here which is administrator but the password is not visible over here so we need to get that particular password and to get that particular password we will be using that particular key which we have just downloaded okay or first we have generated it and then we have downloaded that particular key onto our local laptop so i'm just gonna do i'm just gonna click on gate password over here and here it is going to ask the private key content so as you remember we have created this particular key in the uh, when we are trying to start our windows machine so we need to open this particular uh, content of this particular key file because this is our private key and then we need to paste that content over here then it will generate us the password to login into our windows machine all right so now i have opened that particular private key into one of my notepad and this is the content of my private key so i'm just going to copy all the content over here and go to my aws console and here in this section i'm just going to paste it over here and then after that you just need to click on the decrypt password so click on over here and here you can see this is the password which we will be using it to uh, SSH or to login into our Windows server. So I'm just going to make a copy of this particular password. So I'll just head over to my notepad and here I'm just going to make a note. So I'll just mention the password over here. So this is the password I will be using. Secondly, I'll need a username which is administrator. So copy this one also over here and the third thing is our uh, public dns or the public ip which you can see over here this is our public dns so just copy this public dns also just uh, public uh, dns i'm just going to put the name over here so this is the public dns and these are the details are sufficient enough to perform the remote desktop login okay now we need to open the remote desktop client. So I'm just gonna open the remote desktop client for my uh, Mac OS. And here you can see this is the UI of my remote desktop client. So I just need to click on add PC over here. And here in the PC name, you need to enter the host name or the public IP address. So here I'm just gonna use this particular host name, which I just got from uh, the AWS console connect option. So just paste the link over here and then click on add. And here you can see the uh, profile for your connecting to your windows server has been saved into your rdp client now what you need to do you just need to click on uh, three buttons over here and then click on connect and this will ask you some username and password so here you can see uh, if your details are correct then it is going to pop up the username and password section so from here just copy the username uh, paste it over here and from the password section just copy this one and uh, paste it over here and then click on continue over here and it will ask like are you connecting to rdp host this so just click on continue and here you can see uh, i'll resize the window over here so here you can see this is the remote desktop of my windows machine uh, uh, which i'm able to perform the login and here on the top you can see the details of my uh, ec2 windows machine so this is how you can perform the remote desktop login for your windows server so right now i have just shown to you uh, from mac os but follow the similar steps and you should be able to perform the remote desktop login from your windows as well as from your linux systems